We're talking to Ann Mason, who is the, what is the title? Producing Artistic Director of Relative Theatrics. Here in Laramie, Wyoming. And we're located in the Laramie Plains Civic Center at the Relative Theatrics office. We're going to talk to Ann a little bit about her history here in Laramie and what she does with Relative Theatrics. So the first question, Ann, is how long have you been in Laramie? Well, I was born and raised in Laramie. Um, grew up here, did choir and National History Day and all of those sorts of artsy things, lots of dance as well, which put me on a path towards musical theater. I thought I was going to be a musical theater star. It was going to be great. I was going to go straight to Broadway. Um, and my life didn't turn out that way, but I'm OK with that. I did go to the University of Wyoming. I received my BFA, uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Theater and Dance Performance. And then I left. And then I came back. And that's when I founded Relative Theatrics. And here we are three years later. So. With relative theatrics that you're doing right now, I assume you have some sort of background outside of Laramie in theater. Would you yes. like to talk about that? So after I graduated uh, from the University of Wyoming, I spent a year with Missoula Children's Theater, um, where I worked as a tour actor director. So my tour partner and I, just the two of us, would drive around the country in this little red truck that had everything that we needed in it to put on a full-scale one-hour musical with 60 kids in whatever town we showed up at. So we would show up, we would cast the play, we would teach the kids the play in that week. We would put the set up, put the costumes on them, do the play, then pack up and drive to the next town. So every week we were somewhere else um, producing, acting, and directing plays with children all over the country. And after that, I moved to Sacramento, California, where I worked with um, Sacramento Music Circus and California Musical Theater for um, a term and then did a acting and artistic director apprenticeship with Capital Stage Company um, which is really where I feel like my artistic um, sensibility for myself where that where that formed where I, that developed to what I brought back with me here to Laramie um, and when I was when I was doing that apprenticeship, um, actually when I was applying for it, they asked me what my, one of my long-term goals was, and I said that I wanted to gain the skills so that I could have a production company of my own here in Laramie um, so that I could bring theater to this community because I love Laramie. And it was hard for me as a kid having to drive to Denver or um, just having a limited access here in town to high quality theatrical performances. So I wanted that. So you moved back to Laramie. So I moved back to Laramie. I actually, I moved back to Laramie um, for what I thought would be a summer. I came back to um, work on a couple of shows at the Snowy Range Summer Theater Festival that the university puts on. Um, and I figured, well, as long as I'm home, I might as well try my hand at producing, see how it goes, see what I need to work on. Um, so the summer of 2013, I produced the first play with Relative Theatrics, which was Brilliant Traces by Cindy Lou Johnson. Um, my sister directed it, Claire Mason, and um, I acted in it, which was an honor because I got to act alongside Mark Meaden, who is a fabulous local actor here in Laramie. Um, and it worked really well. And then I ended up getting a teaching job at the university teaching beginning acting. So I stayed and I kept producing. and. And then Relative Theatrics blossomed, and it became kind of my full-time deal. So about when did that blossom happen? <laughs> um, I think it was kind of a slow burn, honestly. Each production from that beginning, from that first one, each production grew. Um, audience numbers grew. Uh, budgets grew. We would get donations. We did a crowdsourcing once, and we were able to receive a lot of financial support from um, from community members in Laramie, from friends of, um, of the various castmates uh, of, and our, the artistic team. Um, but as our presence in the community grew, I think that then uh, the caliber and um, the production quality was able to grow with it. From the very beginning, I wanted 
every production to have the highest quality possible given the restricted means of the budget or whatever financial restrictions we were working under. So a lot of that came into the quality of acting um, and the quality of the scripts that are chosen. So that really does come down onto me because I select the plays. So uh, that's, a, that's a main focus for me. But now that we've grown, we're able to bring more into the scenic and the sound and all of the technical elements so that the whole experience is growing and just moving upscale. So I guess that pretty much answers my next question, which was going to be, what does relative theatrics do? Our mission is to present um, contemporary thought-provoking theater in the Laramie community in Southeast Wyoming that um, ignites conversation, that gets the audience thinking, starts, sparks dialogue, and has one has a focus on um, how we behave as a society, um, what issues we are posed with, and and the power of creativity, what what that passion can create. Okay, so are, there's other people involved yes. in creating this passion, <laughs> correct? <laughs> Theater is a very collaborative art. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you like to talk about some other people? You already mentioned your sister helped you with your first production. Are there yes. other people that have kind of been recurring characters in this story? Sure. So Mark Meaden was in that uh, inaugural production, and he uh, then was in um, our, let's see, I don't know what number, what, what number of production. He was in Nocturne by Adam Rapp, which was a Wyoming premiere. Um, and that was a great production because we collaborated with Dance Studio B, and so we had, it's initially a one-man show, but then we brought in um, dancers from that studio to physically act out some of the other roles. In addition, Jay Shogren was in that production as well, and I absolutely adore working with Jay. Um, he's done that production as well as a couple of readings. He has been involved in Playwrights Voiced. Um, he keeps bugging me to, to help him turn some of his songs into a musical, which I would love to make happen. So there's um, a lot of possibilities there, but uh, working with Jay is always a, a pleasure. Um, Brianna Boyle, who owns and runs Dance Studio B, has choreographed for uh, multiple productions, starting with Nocturne. She also uh, just choreographed a, a fun little dance for the Santa Land Diaries, which we did last December. Um, and she is going to be choreographing a, um, a good amount for our upcoming production, which is the regional premiere of Moon Song by Sean Patrick Higgins, mm -hmm. um, and that is um, it's very it's a personal story for me um, and for Sean as well. It's um, kind of a true story based off of his relationship with his mother, but it's about a son and a mother, um, and the mother has multiple sclerosis, and so the two of them sort of navigate this role reversal as. He goes from being the son, and she's the primary caretaker, to sort of a digression of her disease as he grows into a man and becomes the, a caretaker in that relationship. So perhaps this would be the time to ask you, what are some personal challenges that you've faced in doing this stuff since you brought up the, the personalization of Moonsong? Sure. Well, I mean, in that sense, and why uh, Moonsong is incredibly personal for me uh, is because a year and a half ago I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, and that has, that has been a major challenge, balancing um, my ambitions for this company and for what I would love to do artistically um, and every day of my life with the limitations of my body. So that's always a personal challenge for myself. And then you do have challenges just when dealing artistically, you know, when dealing with so many people, having so many schedules and different ideas coming together, really um, facilitating a good environment where all of those ideas can meld rather than challenge and, and butt against one another mm -hmm. so that you have um, a full team collaborating and that it becomes exciting and communal rather than full of tension and heat. 
Well, somebody. You want to save that for the stage. <laughs> somebody needs to be the director, right? Yes. So do you direct all these productions then? Or? Um, I have directed most of them. I, oh, this, let's see, the third production that we did, we did something kind of interesting where uh, it was a, a four-person show. It's called Honor. Um, and we worked with a student, Kat Cordes, um, who is now off at grad school in Texas, as well as Peter Perelin and Landy Lockhart. And Peter and Landy have also been in multiple um, productions and programming with Relative Theatrics. It is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful working with those two. And um, the four of us directed that as an ensemble. So that was an interesting setup that we tried out. Um, and I think it was during that production where I realized that, um, you know, I had acted in, in two of my shows and I probably wasn't going to do it again for a while. I love acting, I adore acting, um, but I found it incredibly difficult to produce and act at the same time because I could never give either job as much uh, attention and focus as it needed. You know, I would be acting and my mind would be over here thinking about what needed to happen on the production scale, or I would be taking care of business on the production scale, and I kept going back to like, oh, in this moment of the play, I need to be thinking about this, or I gotta remember to, you, you know, I, got, I couldn't focus on either job, so I couldn't do either as well. But direct, directing and producing meld so well. Mm -hmm. um, it's really thinking about a lot of the same things. So I found that um, for me, that combination seems to work very well for relative theatrics at this point in time. Okay. So you do some directing, mm -hmm. you do some producing, do you also do some writing? <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's, um, it's new to me. Yeah. I, I used to be really terrified of writing. Um, I just thought I couldn't do it. There was that pressure to be good, you know, that my first draft would have to be golden and ready to go on stage, which is inconceivable, right? I mean, that's some, <laughs> nobody is like that. Um, it's, it's a process, it's a, it's a craft that you have to cultivate just like any other form of art. And so recently, uh, we do have a playwrights incubator here now that in this space where a group of playwrights will get together and workshop plays. Um, and I've been attending that and it's very inspiring to see all of these writers working on these pieces that they're excited about. Um, and so it, it got me writing every once in a while just doing some dialogue or writing a 10 minute. And you know, this is not stuff that I am ready to share with anyone, but it's a start. And, and then I've also since then taken some, some workshops. I took this writing the play backwards playwriting workshop with um, the education director of Curious Theater in Denver, mm -hmm. uh, which is a wonderful, wonderful theater. If you don't know about them, check them out because they're, I look up to them so much with what they do, it's very akin to the vision that I have for relative theatrics. Um, but so I, I took this playwriting um, workshop with, with Dee Covington, and it was great. She, she, present, she did this exercise with us that, that presented playwriting in a way that I found so accessible, and I found it much easier to enter into that art form uh, rather than kind of staring at this blank canvas and not knowing what to do, you started with an ending and worked backwards, and then you can go back and fill in the gaps and polish and change. Okay. So it sounds like you're moving in that direction. I'm, yes. I'm putting my guard down. I'm, I am building, I'm, I'm working that muscle. Well, but. let's let's go back to some things that you have developed into actual serious projects. Why don't you just briefly illustrate all of the events that Relative Theatrics hosts, like the weekly events and stuff like that? Sure. So our primary focus is the productions. We do um, four productions a year. This this year is. Um, the first year that we called, uh, culminated an entire season, the 2015-2016 season, which we titled the Perspective Season, uh, where in each of the play a character or, or even the audience would experience a shift in perspective. Um, and that opened with By the Sea, By the Sea, By the Beautiful Sea, which was a Wyoming premiere. Um, then we did the Santaland Diaries by David Sedaris. Uh, 
We just closed Venus in Fur by David Ives, which was another Wyoming premiere and uh, received rave reviews and was a thrilling project to work on. And then we're doing this regional premiere of Moon Song. And then at the same time, I am planning next year's season, the 2016-17 season, which is going to be the undisclosed season. And I can't tell you what those plays are yet, <laughs> that's a secret, but it's going to be exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, in addition to that, every year we have a week-long series of stage readings of new plays by local and regional playwrights called mm -hmm. Playwrights Voiced. And that will be happening here in Laramie in the Phoenix Ballroom of the Civic Center uh, May 4th through 7th. So keep your eyes posted for okay. that. Um, and then monthly, we have a play reading uh, program that's funded in part by a grant from the Wyoming Humanities Council. It's called Read, Rant, Relate, Igniting Conversation Through Theater. And we get actors into this room and um, they each read a role in, in a script that I've selected. And then we have a humanities scholar proctor a discussion with the audience members. And those two humanities scholars are Peter Perelin, mm -hmm. again, <laughs> and Bonnie Zare, and they have uh, facilitated some excellent conversations, which is what I love so much about theater is, is how it gets people talking and thinking and, and just starting up a conversation about the world that we live in. So that's been really exciting. Um, and that's actually next happening next week. And then we only have one more this year, um, or this season, so that'll be it until the fall. Uh, but then, on a weekly basis, we have classes here mm -hmm. in the studio. So I teach um, an adult acting class. It's Adult Acting Fundamentals, and it is accessible for everyone, um, regardless of experience or background. Um, it's, it's going really to, to the basics of acting, which, you know, whether you have zero training or have been on the stage all your life, it doesn't hurt to ever go back to the fundamentals. Um, to those building blocks and just reminding yourself of that. So it's, it's great because you can see a wide range of levels of experience in the class. Um, and for the people who have doing it, been doing it for a while, it, it can create new discoveries about the things that they've already learned. And for the people who are trying their hand at it for the first time, um, it's wonderful to see how they then relate acting to their real life and, and finding the ease in that because it is what we do in life. We have something that we want. There may be something in our way, so we find a way around it. And that's what acting is. Mm -hmm. And listening and communicating, having empathy. Mm -hmm. Those are all qualities of acting and those are all things that we work on. It's just scripted uh, in, you know, in a play setting. But we also have an improv class, which is, of course, unscripted. Mm -hmm. And that's led by Emily Edgar from the uh, university's improv troupe, This Just In. Mm -hmm. And she teaches a really fun class with improv. So that's been a blast. OK. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. And we're going to keep an eye out for some upcoming productions. Your next one, once again, is? Moon Song by Sean Patrick Higgins. That's March 31st, April 1st, 2nd, 7th, 8th, and 9th. The tickets are $10 in advance, and they can be purchased at griffintheater.org, um, or they're $15 the day of. OK. Well, thank you very much, Thank Anne. you. You can keep an eye on News From Nowhere's website for updates on all of Relative Theatrics' upcoming events. I'm Wiley Combs, I'm the editor-in-chief of News From Nowhere, and this is Laramie.